Hi, hello, and welcome back to ESPN's College Football 82. I'm George Grant, and the Washington Huskies are looking to nail down a Rose Bowl bid. If they can win this game against traditional rival Washington State in this battle that traditionally is a battle for the Apple Cup in the Pacific Northwest, then, yes, the Huskies will be traveling to the Rose Bowl once again. Jim Simpson and Bud Wilkinson are standing by for a pregame look at this major showdown in the Pacific Northwest. Welcome to the Tunnel Street. Met 48 times with Washington winning of the 74 times they have met in the history of this matchup in the Pacific Northwest. Washington won last year 23 to 10 at Seattle. They're playing in Pullman this year, though. The last time they played in Pullman, 1954, Washington State won then. Remember, Jimmy Walden has never beaten Washington, and Washington coach Don James has never lost to Washington State. Jim Simpson, Bud Wilkinson standing by for the play-by-play -play of College Football 82. I'm George Grant. For the first time since 1954, this game is being held in Pullman, Washington. This is the Palouse area, that area between the Rockies and the dry lands of the state of Washington. Very fertile land, lots of wheat, and today lots of football fans. Don James. Already 9-1 and one on the year, trying to have his most successful, he is on the right, regular season of his career, 10-1. and one. And Jim Walden on your left, the Pac-10 coach of the year a year ago, trying to salvage this season, which is 2-7-1, and, and more injuries than he cares to talk about. Washington State won the toss, but is elected to take the win. So they will be kicking off to the University of Washington, the odds on favorite, heavy favorite in this game, and seemingly destined for the Rose Bowl. Should they stumble today, that is a different story. This game labeled a sellout, even though we could see plenty of empty seats because lately they said they were going to televise it statewide. That is freshman John Prout, who will kick it off, talking to his teammates. And the deep men... Number 15 of Washington, Anthony Allen. And number 26, Tim Peoples. I was surprised him that they took the win. Thought they'd rather have the ball and hope that uh, they could run some time off the clock rather than giving it to Washington to begin with. Well, we must say that Jim Walden was rather not confident and by no means overconfident, but figuring that his team does have a chance today. They're sky high as the balloons, ready to go. <laughs> Temperature 37 degrees. And that wind is gusting to 25 miles an hour. Trout to kick off. The last regular season game for both teams and the ball has blown off the team. And certainly the last game of the year for Washington State Cougars. More about this rivalry. When it was a home game for Washington State in recent years, since 1954, they played in nearby Spokane, Washington. But the Cougars figured that's almost like a neutral site. So they came back to Pullman, Washington, about 85 miles away. And as Jim Wallen said, anybody makes that drive is going to come over and yell for Washington State. John Trout to kick off. With the wind at his back, that is Anthony Allen taking it in the end zone and he will not bring it out. Tim Cowan will start today at quarterback for the Washington Huskies, number 14. Chris James, the fullback. Jock Robinson, the tailback. Paul Scancy, outstanding wide receiver, the flanker. Anthony Allen, back after his injury against Stanford. The split end, the tight end, is Woody Roseboro. The offensive line, Moran, Mallory, Cody, Ascoran, and Dow. First down from the 20. Robinson, the outstanding runner in the Pac-10, picking up about four yards. Defensively, for the Washington State Cougars, Harrington, Eric Williams, Pat Lynch, Keith Millard, keep your eye on him, and Mark Flight. Strong side and weak side linebackers, Tupiola and Carrillo, your deep men, blocker, Rutherford, Waters, and Hobb. Second down, call it seven to go. They split the backs this time, not the eye. 
And Robinson again, and he gets across the 25 to the 27. It'll be third down and three from there. Gerald Waters, a strong safety. Number two came up to make the stop. Washington State has three down linemen, two outside linebackers, two inside linebackers, but they jump the interior of the line on almost every down and do it after the Washington quarterback is set, ready to make the snap, trying to confuse the blocking assignments. Larry Michael, a second tight end, comes in. Third down and short. That is Michael in motion. That is Robinson with the ball, and he is close to the first down, but did not get it. Junior Tupiola, the weak side linebacker, made the stop. And they jumped an extra lineman in the line that time. Virtually a goal line defense. The gamble worked. Kittrick Taylor, as you take a look at Jim Walden, Kittrick Taylor coming on to receive the punt, came on with his fist raised high, jumping up and down. That is how sky high the Cougars and their fans are. And you can see the 10 Washington State men on the line of scrimmage. It appears that they will be trying to block this punt. Only one safety man back. That's Kittrick Taylor, but Jeff Partridge has been blocked three times already this year. Here they come, but Partridge will get it away. Into the wind, the ball hangs up. Kittrick calls for the fair catch at the 38-yard line. And now Washington State will take over with Cleet Casper, the quarterback. He's the better thrower of the two quarterbacks they use. Tim Harris will be one running back. James Matthews, the other running back. Your flankers will be T.J. Jones, number 85, and Mike Peterson, the flanker. And your tight end, Vince Layton. Winslow, Lynch, Sebahar, Patrick, and Sloan, the offensive line. Place the ball at the 39. First down, Washington State. Hand off, straight ahead goes Tim Harris, who is an outstanding rusher and the best that Washington State has ever had. Defensively, Stewart, outstanding linebacker. Holmes, Browning, Cattage, and Caldwell. Driscoll and Hill, the inside linebackers. Horton, an outstanding professional prospect. Stapleton, O'Connor, and Newsom, the deep men. And they, as a combine, lead the Pac-10 in interceptions. Second down, about three to go. The ball at the 46. Matthews, the fullback, I believe has the first down near midfield. It'll be very close. The Veer offense run by the Washington State Cougars as we take a look at the handoff again quickly see the handoff to Matthews here the defensive line playing short yardage moves over in front of it but not quickly enough to keep him from making the first down Washington State plays with three wide receivers out all of the time their tight end Layton is split out from six to eight yards from the tackle so they really have five blockers in position two backs remaining with the quarterback and three wide receivers the wind is calm at the moment but what wind there is at the back to the Cougars as they come out of the huddle, Mike Peterson wide to the right, T.J. Jones wide to the left. First down at the 49-yard line. Come on, defense! And there's Harris again getting across midfield, and that's all. That's the shortest game that the State Cougars have been held to thus far. Second down and long, about nine. The reverse counter veer has been a very effective play for the Cougars. Surprisingly, this is the second leading rushing team in the Pac-10 Conference. Second down, and again, put Jones left, and Kittrick Taylor now to the right. Casper, first time he's had the ball to throw, has the time, goes with the win. Intercepted with right to the defensive back on the play. No question at all that he was there to pick it off. And that was Tony Caldwell, an outside linebacker, dropping off, and Casper delivered it right on the money, right to Caldwell. This is a pass that Kessler should not have thrown. You can see that he's not pressured too much, but he didn't see the linebacker standing there. He should have seen him. He threw the ball directly to Caldwell, did not get it high enough to get it to the crossing receiver. Huskies bustle out of the huddle with the ball on their own 37-yard line. First and 10. Cowan hands the ball off to Jack Robinson, who just does get back to the line of scrimmage. And that's about all. Rupiola and Carrillo in on the tackle. The Huskies, if they win today, bound for the Rose Bowl for the third consecutive year and for the first time ever, ESPN will be at the Rose Bowl. 
Second down, nine. Allen, looking out here, throws it out here for his tight end, Rosebow, a knockdown about near the first down, across the 46-yard line. About a yard shy, Brad Harrington, the outside linebacker, knocked him out of bounds. Very good pass protection here. Fine throw. Good crossing pattern. You see Callum dropping back. A little bit of a draw fake there to try to hold the linebackers. He looks out, catches the wide receiver, Roseboro, who is wide open, picks up just a yard short of the first down. Doc Robinson trying to pick up that first down and has it and more. For the first time today, the Huskies have crossed the midfield strike. And move to the 49-yard line. Doc Robinson leading the pack 10 and rushing with 789 yards. Speaking of the Rose Bowl, he was the outstanding performer there last New Year's Day when Washington shut out Iowa, the Big Ten champion, 28 to nothing. And he'd like the opportunity to do that again this year. Repeat. Except it'll be Michigan, not Iowa, in the Rose Bowl. Straight ahead, the fullback, Chris James, gets nothing. Second down. Michigan came a cropper this Saturday afternoon to Ohio State, but still goes to the Rose Bowl. And we're looking at a very fired up defensive team taking a lot of defensive gambles by moving the front linemen, putting the linebackers in the gaps and bringing the linebackers very quickly as we look at Jim Whalen explaining how the defense ought to slide off to the outside when they try the sweep. Second down nine. The Cougars lost seven linebackers to injury this year. Quick pitch back to Robinson. Robinson gets down to the 45-yard line. It'll be third at about six. Getting up, you can see who's leading the tackle. That's Ben Carrillo, the sophomore, out of West Covina, California, number 91. Don James, Washington head coach, one of the nice men in the sport, who's making, well, he hopes to make the Rose Bowl a habit. If he wins today, it'll be the fourth time in the last six years he's gone to Pasadena. That's a great record. A difficult conference, tough thing to do. Third down, six to go. No score, nine and a half minutes to go, first quarter. Gowan coming out, has running room, throws the ball, and it is dropped at the sideline. Dropped by Anthony Allen, back for the first time since the Stanford injury, and it looked as though Cowan could have gone for the first down, but then saw Allen threw the ball right on the hands, and he dropped the ball. One of those unfortunate things that, uh, from a coaching standpoint, you wish your quarterback would run with the ball when he can make the first down, but you also know that that's a chance of injury. Better to throw the ball, but you expect it to be caught. Jeff Potridge again to kick the ball away to Kittrick Taylor, number eight, who is standing on his own 10-yard line. Potridge gets it high in the air. The wind will hold it up. Could be outstanding for Washington. Let's see where it goes. It is going to be outstanding for Washington. All of bouncing back across the 10 and will be on down about the 12. All right, 9.13 to go. An excited first quarter. Boom and Washington. Washington, nothing. Washington State, nothing. Look in Grenoble, France. Cliff Drysdale and I will be there for live coverage of the Davis Cup. And Friday, two singles matches. Remember John McEnroe, Gene Mary, Ellie Telcher there. Saturday, McEnroe and Fleming. And on Sunday, two more singles matches. And Cliff Drysdale says he believes that France playing on clay indoors can beat the United States as the USA tries to successfully defend its Davis Cup title. We will be there live all three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday here on ESPN. And now let us get back to Washington and Washington State. No score, no one is threatened. Ball at the 12-yard line, the worst field position for either team thus far. Cleet Casper, the quarterback. In motion, Peterson. And straight up comes their fullback. And that is James Matthews getting up near the 20-yard line. Vince Newsom, the free safety, had to come up and make the stop. The man in motion coming across the backfield takes the secondary out as you see the great trap block made by Patrick there to spring Matthews into the secondary. He's taken on very squarely and beautiful tackle by Newsom, but a big gain on the play, nine yards. Vince Layton, a tight end, comes out for the Cougars, and in is a wide receiver, the freshman D.D. Moore, number 20. It is second down and a yard and a half to go. Now they're telling Moore to get out and back. A little problem with their offensive setup, and now it's going to call time. Going to call time. Moore came in, stepped out in an offensive set, and stepped up on the line. They had too many men on the line of scrimmage. Casper was saying, get in the backfield, and finally said, time out. 
Moore is a freshman, uh, but uh, at this time of the season, you don't think freshmen will make those kind of errors. But he did. Eight minutes, 32 seconds left as Jim Walden, Pac-10 Coach of the Year, talks with his senior quarterback, Cleek Casper. Casper was red-shirted behind a fellow by the name of Jack Thompson back in 1978. Thompson went on to have many more than 7,000 yards throwing the ball, only to have that record of the Pac-10 eclipsed this year by John Elway down at Stanford. Jim Whalen said, talking about the Washington team, they're not an impressive team statistically. All they do is just beat you, and uh, one of the things that has happened thus far that you overlook very easily is Washington State's first possession was on their 38. Their second possession was on their 11 on the exchange of punts, a 27-yard gain by the University of Washington. That's how you win football games. We are in Pullman, Washington, and while they huddle there, we'll tell you something. Until 1881, this was called Three Forks, Washington, but they renamed the town after Pullman, the same George Pullman they named the railroad car after. There's your little bit of historic trivia about this section of the country. All right, again, second down the yard and a half. Kittrick this time comes in motion. They get the ball instead to Harris, and Harris, I believe, has got the first down. Tim is very close to the first down. And you can see number 99, Dean Browning, the nose guard, in on the stop. Stapleton, the corner man, is going in motion with the flanker when he crosses the formation. We can look for Washington State to come back to that side against that defense. Again, Bud, there's some confusion. In came Layton, in came Taylor, and they were waved away, and out comes D.D. Moore to the right side this time as Jones and Peterson go left at the top of your screen. First down. Peterson in motion. Casper on first down, sprinting out. He can run, he can throw, and throws, and coming back to D.D. Moore. Four out to the 35-yard line. First down, Washington State. Vince Newsom again makes the stop. And the Cougars are not playing like 18-point underdogs. Good sprint out pass. The secondary doesn't know whether to come up to support. Casper gets outside the contained man and makes an excellent throw on the run. Moore making the reception, but you can see that he was right between two men. He made a fine pivot back to the inside to pick up the extra yards for the first down. Taylor and Jones come wide to the right. Actually, they're to the short side of the field, and Taylor now goes to the opposite side of the field. Stapleton trails him down. As straight ahead goes the fullback, James Matthews, and that fine Washington defense, bud, is having a little trouble. Well, when the man in motion goes, you've got to adjust to him, which means that defensive secondary is moving laterally rather than playing their normal position where they could come forward very quickly if the linemen charge out across the line of scrimmage and you know it's a run. The man in motion has been very effective thus far for Washington. Don James Washington of Washington, excuse me, has never lost to Washington State. First quarter, no score. There goes Peterson in motion. And going ahead again is your fullback, James Matthews, the senior who leads the club in rushing. And against Idaho this year had a 172-yard game. And you wonder when Washington State is going to turn the corner, taking that inside play, keeping it, and having the option ready to break it to the outside. Ball is placed down on the 42-and-a-half-yard line. They've got to get the ball almost to the 45 for the first down. Third down and short. Taylor and Moore to the right. down but down goes Tim Harris wrestle down on a good play by Stuart Hill the inside linebacker number 46 they guessed right that time assuming that it would be the uh, handoff to the inside and it's very very close the Washington State people think that it's a first down and we're going to get a measurement I'm as called and it's a man down on the field and it is a Washington man who is hurt down on the field and that looks like Ken, Ken Briscoe. That's number 40, the senior. He would be a very tough man to lose. He is their leading tackler. He's made 64 unassisted, 56 assisted, 120 tackles so far this season. And it's a very cliche. I, I don't know, Bud, if they're on that left knee or not, but it's a cliche. But every time you see him reach for a knee, you take a quick breath. Well, it's 6.09 to go. Let us hope that Ken Driscoll would be all right. We'll check on it when we come back to Pullman, Washington, where there's no score in the first quarter. From the field, holding up that left leg as though the knee is bothering him. 
Ray Horton has gone deep to receive the punt of Glenn Harper, who is averaging nearly 39 yards per kick and has the wind at his back. Washington is not sure they're going to punt. Flag goes down as the ball goes off the side of the foot of Harper, and Horton will watch it go out of bounds. Whoops! <laughs> I'm sorry, but one of the officials has been absolutely decked by Robert Williams, a fullback. And the flag was not dropped on the play. It is a legal motion charged against Washington State. I'm sure they'll bring that ball back and have them punt it again. Motion charge are going with Ray Horton. When you speak of the secondary, Horton has three interceptions. He's an outstanding player. Chris O'Connor has four, as does Vince Newman have four. And Robert Leapart has three interceptions. So between them, that's a total of 14 interceptions. And of course, we've seen here today uh, interception by Tony Caldwell, the outside linebacker. It's fourth down and one. Washington. Illegal motion. What you would call a normal Off running it. defense. Expecting the fourth State down. To run the ball. This time with fourth and six, they will be either to rush the punt or set up the return. Glenn Harper hoping for a much better kick, although he got excellent results with his last kick, which was. Less than good looking Ray Horton outstanding professional prospect outstanding college player ball is up and another bad kick off the side again and they've gained a lot of yardage here as the ball goes out of bounds inside the 30 yard line and it's obvious that Glenn Harper was very bothered by the rush even though he did not have everybody coming 34 reasonably yard punt which isn't bad reasonably good pressure but uh He's rushed it just a little bit, I believe. Let's watch his kicking form here. The snap from center, a little low, but not bad. The ball is dropped, and looks like the forward point of the ball went over just a little bit, and he hit the ball too close to his ankle and heel, not enough on the instep. First quarter, 5.57 to go. Count hands the ball off to Jack Robinson, his best one of the day. Cuts to the outside. They do it. Being pursued by Blocker, and Blocker gets him from behind. First down inside the 35-yard line. Jack Robinson, the sophomore from San Jose, California, rips off a long run. Just your regular breakaway play inside. Then he takes that marvelous move to the outside. He's got the speed, breaking the corner. It appears that he might take it all away. Blocker was just not able to get to him. He's out of bounds, however, before he can get it further down the field to complete a touchdown run. 36-yard run for Jack Robinson. And here's Cowan back, and he's throwing, and oh, what a catch by the man who makes great catches, Paul Scancy. He made one against Arizona State a week ago that was unbelievable, and it was a touchdown. This is another diving catch. And a beautiful fake after a good running play. If you fake to a back, you freeze the linebackers. There's the fake. <laughs> Cowan back, hits Sancy, and he stretches him out. But sancy has got the ability to stretch to make the catch, and we're coming in to measure for a first down. Whether or not it's the 10 yards, there is no score. Washington State on its best drive, or I should say Washington on its best drive. Washington State has had good field position at midfield and actually in Washington territory. That's that far from a first down, second down and short. But uh, the Cougars have never really mounted a threat, and this is the first threat by either team in the ball game. Delightful day, temperature near 40 degrees. The sun is out, and I think we told you that it snowed last night here the in Pullman, Washington. Offensive tackles for Washington are huge. They're the anchors of the offensive line. Moran weighs 284 pounds, is 6'6". Dow is 6'6", and weighs 280 pounds. Good look there at Tim Cowan, the quarterback, who's not done much except ride the bench until lately he is knocked off UCLA starting the game and last week Arizona State. And they believe in him. That's the up man. That's the fullback Chris James, the senior, and Pat Lynch, the nose guard, number 65, is there to submarine the play. But that should be enough for the first down. Is enough for the first down for the Huskies. Rose Bowl bound, they hope, but they've got to win today. If they do not, well, then Arizona State's got a chance, and UCLA's got an outside chance. Very good line takeoff that last play by Mallory, Cody, and Sarkin. They simply had enough speed off with the ball to pick up the short yardage. We love ESPN. Nice to see those signs out here in Pullman. 
First down, the ball on the 27-yard line. And now Cowan steps back to yell something. Hands the ball back to Robinson, and Robinson gets inside the 25-yard line. Keith Millard down the bottom there, along with number 79, Milford Hodge, a sophomore. Robinson is 5'11", weighs 205, and he leads the Pac-10 in rushing. He's Collins averaging runs. nearly 79 yards a game. Excuse me, and Colin uh, thought he saw something and turned around, checked signals, and as he made his call to his own teammates, Washington State adjusted the defense. They were ready for whatever the check was. Second down and seven to go. Scancy to the left. And Cowan, the throw, going for Anthony Allen, touchdown! <laughs> 24 yard touchdown play. Washington is on the board. And Cowan, has thrown for seventh touchdown of the year. And Allen has caught his fifth of the year. Allen simply beats Blocker here very, very badly. There's the fake Robinson coming over the ball. Cowan steps up in the pocket, throws the ball. And you can see Blocker going to the ground there as Allen takes it easily into the end zone for the score. And now Chuck Nelson, one of the real stars of collegiate football. 28 consecutive field goals going back to last year. On points after touchdown, 32 out of 32 this year. And the ball is up, and the kick is doing what comes naturally. And with 4.24 to go in the first quarter, Washington hopefully headed for the Rose Bowl. That's their opinion and hope. Leading 7-0 over Washington State. Time left. I would imagine most of you will be finished with your Thanksgiving Day dinners. Tune in to Top Rank Boxing to finish off your evening. 9 o'clock Eastern Time. 6 o'clock Pacific time, live right here on ESPN from Las Vegas, Nevada. And we've got a junior lightweight bout, a heavyweight bout, a flyweight bout, a junior middleweight bout. Lots of fine fighters on our Thursday night special. Here is Castelletta time, and there's his tight end, Vince Layton, and they're going to call it a catch and a fumble and a recovery. Layton is saying, hey, I didn't have the ball that long. The receiver was wide open on the play. You never know for sure how the official is going to see it from what angle as we watch Casper dropping back. He has time. The receiver coming across the field appears to have made the catch, but you can see that he really didn't ever have the ball put away. However, I think he held it for a stride or two. The referee said, yes, he had possession. Then he fumbled the football, and you can see that Walden does not in any way agree that the ball was ever caught, but it's a little too late now to do anything about it. Stuart Hill jumped on it along with uh, Mark Stewart. Walden still says, hey, that is not a recovery at the 41-yard line. But Washington has got the ball, and they've got the lead as we start the second quarter. Scancy, who's made one great catch today, wide to the right. Cowan rolling this way, going for Scancy, and you know he's going to catch the ball first down at the 48-yard line. Run out of bounds by Mark Blocker. ESPN today is in Pullman, Washington, where the Huskies hope to wrap it up and go to their third consecutive Rose Bowl, their fourth in their last six years. Very expensive fumble, a second turnover by Washington State. When you're playing a Rose Bowl-bound team, you can't afford to give turnovers. As Michigan found out today in their game with Ohio State, Robinson drags a tackler with him. That's Pat Lynch. Ball is loose. Washington State says they've got it. And the officials have not yet said they've got it. Washington goes back to huddle. Ball belongs to Washington. And we have the home crowd in total disagreement again with the decision made. Cowan hands the ball off to Robinson. He finds some daylight. As he goes down, he is on the ground before the ball bounced loose. Correct call by the officials. And again, a four yards, second down and six, the ball at the 44. Walden doesn't like what's going on out there. This time, Jim, we agree with the officials. Quick pitch, here's Robinson again, tough man, and gets down near another first down inside the 40-yard line. And it's just what Jim Walden said. Nothing tricky, nothing fancy. Not great statistics, but at the end of the day, you look up at Washington's ahead of whomever they're playing on the scoreboard. And they have made no errors today with the exception of the holding penalty on the punt. They Third down. 
not fumbled, not intercepted it, not had any penalties other than that one holding penalty. Robinson has 63 yards on the day. The only loss of the year was to John Elway and Stanford, 43-31. Third and very short, less than a yard to go. And there's Robinson, and whether or not he got it, I don't know. All depends, as we so often say, where they spot the ball. Has to get to the 38-yard line, and where they're standing now, it would appear that he did. But we'll wait till they put it down. And if Woody Hayes' team were on defense, he would not agree. They have never marked it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> they will measure. Here come the sticks. 13-12 to go in the first half. And Allen is sure that it's a first down. He's calling it for the official. <laughs> the Huskies would like to go up another touchdown here. 7-0 against a fired up Cougar team and a fired up Cougar crowd is hardly time to relax. Anthony Allen who caught the touchdown pass wide to the left, Scancy to the right. First down from the 38. Wow, was wide. He ran right, first of all, into his own fullback, Chris James. He was supposed to be blocking for him, but uh, he's not able to get to it. It's a very quick count here. Cowan is just barely set as we see Robinson coming forward, but there's absolutely do no daylight. A very fine defensive play that time by Millard. Ball now on the 37 and a half yard line. Second down and nearly 10 to go. Whoops, tried to pull away there. Came away a little early, but now comes back. The fake to the running back. Cowan still with the ball. He's got some room to run. He got inside the 30 yard line before he's through and steps up near a first down. At the 28 and a half yard line, blocker running him out of bounds with an outstanding run by the senior quarterback Tim Cowan. And again, we're going to have timeout officials. And again, I believe it is in order to bring the sticks in and measure. Jim Walden on the far sideline really thought his injury riddled squad had a chance in this ball game today, and well, they might before it's all over. But the Huskies do lead and are driving again. And the measurement is to see whether or not they get another first down. And you had to be beaten by uh, makeup play as you were on the last one where all the receivers were covered. Cowan had good protection. Then Cowan saw the daylight and ran for the first down. That is not the last time that Washington State beat Washington, the last time they played here. But uh, they have lost eight straight to Washington whether it be in Seattle or in Spokane. And when you consider 1954 was 28 years ago, that's a long time between getting a real home game against your cross state rivals. First down, and now Cowan steps away. And he doesn't like the adjustment made by the state defense. You can see the guards move into an even set and the linebackers move inside. That's four linemen, uh, four players rather defensively, two linemen, two linebackers against the three middlemen of the line. Someone can come home free. Well, I hope they run the same play because Anthony Allen never came back to the huddle. They had 10 men in the huddle and Allen standing out wide at the 29-yard line. Must mean a running play. <laughs> Robinson, fine play from behind by Pat Lynch, holding on for dear life, number 65, the junior out of Spokane. And it'll be second down and long. And you called it correctly, Jim, when Allen didn't come back in. You knew it was going to be a run. <laughs> and if we knew it up here, I'm sure that the Washington State crowd and They played there, like they did. <laughs> 12.03 to go. The Huskies and their fans are here. You can see not only the hair, but Husky fever written on the jacket. As we come back, and this is Robinson trying to get outside, and he is inside the 10. First and goal to go. The stop made by Steve Hobbs. Number 28, tackle number 28. I don't know what happened to Blocker on the play. I guess Robinson really just juked him very well. If you watch on the right-hand side of the screen, there's the pitch. Robinson breaks it inside. And blocker was bounced a little bit tripped, which is why he went to the ground so solidly. Robinson has already carried for 88 yards. Washington looking to go up by two touchdowns. Come out on the eye for one of the rare times today, and a flag goes down. It's a very quick count. The line wasn't quite set. The offensive tackle Dow beat the count. And for the first time today, we see Dennis Brown in as a tailback. A legal motion or procedure 
against Washington and since the ball is on the four yard line it might be that they'll decide to take those five yards and get back to the nine and make it first and goal from the nine Don James what an outstanding career he's had overall including his work at Kent State 91 44 and one at Washington he's 66 and 25. And the field goal kicker Nelson stretching. Look for Scantic. Cut. No, oh, they said he was out of bounds. Didn't get the foot in. And, and Cowan have... was down there to disagree. Great disagreement among the fans also. All of the Washington fans cheering. Touchdown. The state fans saying no, he was out of bounds as we take another look at it. Good throw on the run by Cowan. Scantic's open. And now he has the ball. And it looked to me his knees were on the ground inside, but the official standing there said no, he was out of bounds. I think he was juggling the ball, in my opinion, Bud, and that's why that he did not have complete possession. He, we all have our opinions of the official that is. And here's Robinson back in, and Robinson gets down to about the six yard line. And now Chuck Nelson better start thinking about warming up because it's third down and goal to go. As you said, we all have our opinions, but there's only <laughs> one that counts. That's right, the man on the striped shirt. Seven to nothing, Washington State. Tom James of Washington looking on would just love to hold him to it. Nothing, of course, but three. Can we take a look again at the pass, whether it's a touchdown or whether he was out of bounds. Scancy makes the reception, and the ball was being juggled in his hands just a little bit. The referee ruled he did not have possession before going out of bounds, even though his knees hit the ground inbounds. Third down. Cowan right up the middle. Doesn't get it away. Fourth down. They'll call on Nelson. Keith Ballard made the stop along with Pat Lynch. Cowan gets up disappointed. Big, obviously. Big, big play by the Husky State defense that time. Cowan moved. He had plenty of time, but the secondary men did not leave their receivers when he started to run with the ball until they were positive. Fine defensive play by the entire Cougar team. Nelson now trying for his 24th consecutive field goal of this year and his 29th stretching back to last year. 21 yard field goal try. He just doesn't miss but he's got an angle. Ball is down. Ball is up. Ball is good. Nelson does it again again and with 10 4 to go here in Pullman Washington the Huskies have 10 points up on their trip to the Rose Bowl leading the Cougars of Washington State 10 nothing. back in a moment Jim Simpson Bud Wilkinson the last regular season game for Bud and me but we've got some dates together in bowl games in December and on January 1 on the far side there is Magnuson number 40. That is Rupert Mays on the near side 36. And Nelson has the ball blown off the tee. He is just connected on. Well you can talk about the NCAA records but this man is quite a kicker and it's not all little chip shots from 21 yards. He'll hit him up to 50 yards. With great consistency. And nothing Nelson to kick off. State's got to get its offense going. And here is Mays at the four, 15, 20, and good kick return back to the 26-yard line. Reuben Mays, and now Casper will bring his team back out on the field again. Until today, a lot of the quarterbacking of Washington State has been done by Turner and Casper, alternating many times on every other play. Today it has been Casper all the way. I think Walden feels that uh, they must throw the ball against this tough Washington defense and Casper is the better thrower. Casper from the 27 yard line has to get something going. Peterson in motion to the right. But instead they bust the ball straight up the middle and that is Tim Harris carrying the ball and you can see hanging on to him Tony Caldwell number 48. Stapleton is there and Dean Browning also there. And yet another man Ray Cattage there. There's your scoring drive, 12 plays, 55 yards, the last 21 negotiated by Nelson's 24th consecutive field goal of this year, the 29th extending back to last year. Uh, each time Washington State's had the ball, they've made at least one first down, so they haven't really been shut out. Second down, 
And four to go. Casper hands the ball off to his fullback. That is James Matthews. Hill makes the stop, and Matthews has got the first down. Out near the 40-yard line. And they keep their record intact, but another first down on this possession. But they've really not moved deep into Washington territory at all. Their field position the first time they got the ball was good on the 38-yard line, but then it was the 11, the 14, and the 27. That uh, puts you a long way from the goal line. Against Colorado, a team that's not set the world on fire this year, I'll tell you in a moment. Casper back to throw. Throws, has his man out of the backfield. That's Harris, tackled quickly by Hill for a pickup of some yards across the 40, about five. Against Colorado, when they were shut out 12-0, Washington State only got across midfield one time in the entire game. They called us the Apple Cup, and there is an Apple Cup, and the winner gets his name engraved, and thus far it has been Washington. Don James has never lost to Washington State, and the last eight games have been won by Washington. Second down and six to go. Taylor in motion. Up, oh, drop the football, and Casper jumps on it. Harris left something behind as he started... That little counter play at the 45-yard line, but Casper alertly jumped on it, but now it is third down Casper, and three to go. Casper got a little bit too far outside on the fake before he turned back for the counter, and Harris was not quite close enough to him. Casper would have done better to just keep the football, not to try to stretch when he couldn't reach the man that was to receive it. Mike Peterson has given Cleet Casper the play on third and three. <laughs> Casper throwing, has his man, Peterson, first down. Standing there's Ray Horton, but couldn't do anything about that. Peterson came in with the play. Peterson was a primary receiver. He caught the ball. First down, they have moved into Washington territory at the 47-yard line. Peterson went down, just a little stop pattern. He's hooking. Horton has to give him a little bit of cushion. He came back toward the ball, was wide open, and a good throw by Casper for the completion. Ken Driscoll, who went out limping a little while ago, has come back in the ball game, but now is going out again, hurt again. This time it looks like it's in the stomach or rib area, not a knee. So Driscoll did come back, but now is on his way off the field again. Inside linebacker, leading tackler for the University of Washington. Casper's four for eight for 30 yards. First down inside the 47 yard line, 7.40 to go. First half, 10 nothing Washington. Harris picking up some good yards, perhaps five inside the 45, down to the 42-yard line. Inside the 42-yard line. They'll mark it nearly at the 41 and a half, let's call it. Very good line takeout that time by Patrick and Sloan. Had he not slipped just a little bit over one of his blockers' feet, he would have picked up a big game. Second down and five to go. E.J. Jones wide left. Peterson is back in the ball game in motion. Straight ahead, there goes Harris. First down inside the 30. Hanging on is Vince Newsom, number 23. Washington State in the best position it's been all day. And we look at the linebackers, Driscoll and Hill. You can see how quickly the play hit. The linebackers did not even see that Harris had the ball. They weren't blocked. They were playing wide, and he simply popped inside of them. And Newsom got a lot of help because, in actuality, Newsom helped up Ray Horton on the tackle. Jim Harris has 53 yards on nine carries. Taylor, whoops, stepping up. Pete Casper doesn't like what he sees, calls timeout. Timeout at Fullman, Washington, where the state Cougars are trying to get the University Huskies in their annual battle. 6.36 to go. And the score is Washington 10 and Washington State nothing. A chilly day in Pullman, Washington. Not all the seats are occupied, but all the seats have been sold for this one. Washington leading 10-0, first down at the 28th for Washington State. And Casper did a very wise job of calling that timeout. His man in motion had already started in motion before his tight end, Layton, had taken his position. You can't have two men in motion. Had he let the play go, they would have been called for illegal procedure. Crowd looking on here, they would love to have a victory. Outstanding 
season in 1981 for Washington State when they were 8 3 and 1, including a two point loss to Brigham Young in the Holiday Bowl. Thought big, big things were coming up, but not to be this year. They're 2 7 and 1, trying to end their season on a big note. Taylor in motion. And there's Harris turning and spinning inside the 25 yard line. A pickup of four yards. It'll be second down and six. And it's been a rare occasion, Bud, when the first down play of Washington State has not produced four or more yards. The motion is giving Washington's defense a great deal of cover. We started out with the corner man going all the way across with the motion man, whether it's the flanker or the tight end, that some, or the split end that sometimes comes in motion. They've now changed where one of the inside safeties is the man making the move. Second down and a short seven. Astor gives the ball to Harris, and Harris picks up the tub. Lost the football, and I believe it belongs to, well, did they whistle it dead or not? That ball came popping out of there. It probably is that the whistle had blown, even though Harris was not down on the ground. Yeah, because that's Casper's that, uh, staying out there. Sometimes you feel I wish the whistle had been a little later, because we recovered the fumble, and it would have been a first down. <laughs> Now it is third down and five to go. Here is where Casper and company need something. Ball at the, well, inside the 23-yard line. Jones wide to the right. Taylor flanked inside to the right. One of the rare times no one has been in motion. Yep, man. Whitenight made the stop, but Harris got the first down, I am sure. And beautiful blocking as we watch the quick takeoff by Harris, but it was the blocking up front of Sloan and Patrick that opened the hole. The linebackers, again, couldn't react back inside quickly enough to get to him, and we're getting a measurement for the first down. Well, uh, they are less positive than I was when I saw him go down there. You He's were right it. again, Jim. You were right again. <laughs> Ball on the 18-yard line, 10 to nothing, Washington, 5.22 to go, first half. First down, Washington State, for the first time, inside the 20-yard line of the Huskies. State has beaten Oregon, Idaho, and tied Oregon State. Other than that, it has been a disastrous season. Peterson in motion. There goes Harry. The 10-yard line. Stuart Hill hanging on for dear life. The motion again is very effective. See the motion man drawing number 11 across, and then look at the blocking. The linebackers are screened off, and Harris hits it very, very quickly, just short of the first down. They pull the back ball back and said it hit, or his knee hit at the 10-yard line. But a second about a yard and a half. Harris will only gain 71 yards. Here goes Matthews! First down the ball. White Knight makes the tackle. James talk Matthews. Talked about what the motion is doing to the ability of the Washington defense to recover. The motion just gets them a little bit off balance and then they get great blocking. They pop it up inside and the quarterback's fake and the counter Picks up big, big yardage. It's first down just outside the five-yard line. Coming wide to the left, T.J. Jones flanked inside him to freshman D.D. Moore. Crowd is alive. They're gathering in the end zone. It's not the end of the game. Here is Matthews. A yard, no more, inside the five. Second down. Huskies say it was a fumble and they recovered. But that is not the case. Don James looking on. Bud called him the other day and said, congratulations on a great season. And he said, Bud, I got one more game, and this is it. And he is right. That's the way all coaches feel. It's how they should feel. I don't think Matthews got the signal on that last play. Didn't take off very well. It was just a quick toss to him, but he didn't really have a start that he needed to get outside. Second down. Peterson in motion. It'll be third down. Joe Krakowski filling in for Kent Driscoll, who for the second time today has golf injured, has made the stop, along with Ron Holmes, the sophomore tackle out of Lacey, Washington. 
And on that play, the motion man simply caused the corner man to widen. The rest of the Washington defense simply stayed put and played the play. In quickly comes Magnuson, and Harris has to get off the field. Taylor goes in motion. Quick pitch back to Matthews. Touchdown! Impressive drive all of the way. Excellent blocking, excellent faking. John Trout trying to get the two-point conversion. Flags are down. Fingers are being pointed. A legal procedure charged against Washington State. Washington State had their kicker set up to kick the ball in their center there, but the rest of the team over to one side, as you sometimes do, to order set up some kind of a play as we look at the touchdown again. And you can see the beautiful toss out to Matthews. Excellent blocking, which enabled him to turn it upfield and easily into the end zone. Now John Trout was 11 for 13. That's what amounts to a 25-yard field goal, but it is an extra point. He is trying to make it 10 to 7. Ball is up. Ball is good. Washington State dreaming the impossible dream after a disastrous season finds themselves now down by only three. 2.47 to go on the half. Washington 10. Washington State 7. Seven to go. Jim Walden's team is on the scoreboard. Walden smiling for one of the few times today, especially with an official. It is 10 to 7 here in the first half. 73 yards, 15 plays. They held onto the ball for better than seven minutes. And then Matthew scored. And the strategy of the man in motion has really broken down the consistency and particularly the pursuit of the Washington defense. Both linebackers are inside. It's a quick toss to the outside. Excellent blocking downfield. That was Moran who made the key block to put Matthews into the end zone. But I don't know if we have time as Trout tees it up. But I'd like you to explain after this next play, barring a remarkable play, why that man in motion is really confusing the Washington defense because it was an integral part of the strategy as explained to us yesterday and it's paying off. But now let us take a look at this kickoff by John Trout. The Peoples and Scanty deep. And this will be Peoples to take the ball at the 13-yard line. And Peoples is going to be wrestled down. The play made by Richard Williams, a defensive back. Now, why does that confuse the Washington defense? They put three wide receivers out to begin with, and they're moving the inside man up sometimes or back sometimes or both wide men on the line of scrimmage and then having the other man come across in motion. Washington State has to keep all of the people covered, even though one of them becomes ineligible if two wide receivers are up on the line of scrimmage. And it has confused them. At halftime, they'll talk about it a great deal, and I think they'll play it better in the second half. Penalty called, as you can see, against Washington. Personal foul called, and they're going to step it off, and it's a question of when did it take place before or after the play. But they're whipping the ball back inside the 20-yard line after people's line run back, and now Don Wilson will tell us exactly what happened. We have a dead ball, personal foul against the receiving team. First down. It was a dead ball, personal foul, after the play was over. And that makes such a difference, Jim. It's first and 25 rather than first and 10 when it's after the whistle has been blown dead. Two minutes, 45 seconds to go. Scanty in motion now for Washington. Cowan hands to Robinson, and he doesn't get anywhere. Back to the line of scrimmage, Pat Lynch led the charge along with Junior Tupiola. Washington State is fired up, and I'll repeat what Jim Walden said. Anybody that buys tickets to come up from Spokane or from anywhere to Pullman, it's a long drive from almost anywhere, is going to come up to yell. Otherwise, they just simply stay home. And they have their enthusiasm regenerated by that marvelous 72-yard touchdown drive. 
Two ten to go now. Second down, 24. Cowan back, looking to throw. Has a man, and that is Anthony Allen, who caught the touchdown pass, and he's got a first down at the 45. And Allen was behind everybody. Really hard to figure how a man can get this open as we watch Allen going downfield. There's a little bit of a juke, and then he's crossing the field, and as you can see, the cornerback simply didn't get back deep. The safety man was able to come across and make the tackle. Fine execution, but not good defensive play. Ball at the 45-yard line, 203. There's Allen going out wide to the left. 10 to 7 Washington. Closing moments. First half. Scancy in motion. Cowan. Time again. Throws over to Scancy, and Scancy is down inside the 45. And a lot of folks are playing center field for Washington State's defense. One time, they were able to get the ball over them down, and this time they throw under the coverage to Scancy. Well, they had both linebackers back so deep. If you watch 54-91 there, see them dropping into their drop pattern. Scancy watches them go and then just comes right across in front of where they were, and then he's got some nifty little moves downfield to pick up the first down. Whoop! The blitz is on, and Cowan has had it. Flag goes down. It could be face mask as he got him down, but Milford Hodge, when the blitz was on, was not picked up at all. And let's see whether or not it is a face mask foul as he pulled him down, which would negate a big play, throwing him back to the 45-yard line. It's a penalty that is needed, but it's always so inadvertent. The man is reaching. The man with the ball is always ducking, twisting, and you can get your hand on the face so easily as Jim Walden says, what else can happen? But by golly, stay after him. Yep. <laughs> Take the ball. They'll go, what they'll do is go up to the line of scrimmage now, see. They won't step it off from there and then step off five yards. Called it inadvertent rather than design penalty, but it was still about a 20-yard difference for Washington Thanks, State. Man. On the defense. <laughs> so instead of a great play by Milford Hodge, and it was a great play, but he did grab that face mask, and it's a gain of five yards, and it's first down and five, and the ball is inside the 40 of Washington State. Now I'm looking for Scancy and throws behind him. Scancy reached back over there to help defend with Steve Hobb. 135 left. And Scancy is an impressive receiver. He's got great moves downfield and surprising speed. 5'11", 190, a senior leading the club in catches even before today out of, I love his hometown, Gig Harbor, <laughs> Washington. Do some fishing there. <laughs> Second down, high formation. Now and looking, and there's Allen between everybody. Did not, well, they're going to say he got out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. A minute and a half to go. They're already in Chuck Nelson territory. And Allen is wide, wide open, as you can see. Made a very good catch of an excellent throw. Slides out of bounds to kill the clock. Minute 30 to go. Washington with three timeouts, so time should not be too much of a factor for them. Ball is on the 18-yard line. That prevents defense. Cowan has just picked apart, and the receivers have found many open spots. Here's Cowan again. Looking for Scancy, and overthrows him. Scancy was well behind Steve Hobb, the sophomore out of Seal Beach, California. But the ball with the wind at his back was overthrown by... Tim Cowan. And the blitz was on. Didn't give him quite enough time. See the blitz coming here. Linebackers coming. They're picked up reasonably well, but Cowan felt the pressure. Didn't have quite enough time to get set. The ball with the wind behind it blows away. Scancy can't quite get to it. All the time in the world. One minute and 15 seconds for Washington. Ball on the 18. Scancy wide to the left. Allen comes to the right. Eye formation. Second down 10. Cowan Hands the ball to Robinson. This time it does not work. As he went through, he was dragged down by Millard and Ben Carrillo. Carrillo got him around the ankles, and Millard put him down. And time has been called. Washington has to call a time here with 1.07 to go and a situation in which they find themselves third down and nine. So it not only becomes time, but let's call it third down and eight, but it becomes distance also. I'm trying to do something to pick up the first down, but they know that they have Nelson in reserve, and that's a reasonably sure three points. 
He's got the most beautiful rhythm that I've seen in a place kicker in a long time. That is Nelson working out on the sidelines. 21 yard field goal already today. 24 consecutive field goals this year. 33 for 33 points after touchdowns this year. And extending back into last year, 29 consecutive field goal attempts were good. And you wonder whether Washington State will come with a blitz. It's a pass down. They tried to surprise them with a run on second down. They'll almost certainly throw this time. The blitz can get to them, but if you blitz, you don't have a lot of people to help you downfield if some receiver runs a beautiful pattern. Temperature in the mid to upper 50s. Jim Walden there. And that's Davey Elliott, the secondary coach, talking with him. Son well, of Pete Elliott. Uh, I was going to say, <laughs> Elliott sounds familiar. I checked on him, and they had his age listed in the Washington State book, but as 40, and I said, no. Pete Elliott does not have a <laughs> son who is 40 years old. He yeah, is Pete 30 years old. Pete does. <laughs> <laughs> he played on the 72 Michigan Rose Bowl team. Dave Elliott now a coach. Here's Cowan. Third down and eight to go. Passing down. Gets the ball over the middle. Cut by Anthony Allen. Touchdown. His second of the day. With one minute left. Allen ran a beautiful pattern and Cowan threw a strike. We did not have a blitz. We had a four man rush. The crossing pattern by Allen. He simply had too much speed. Cowan delivered it between the receivers and then he was able to burst it into the end zone. Nelson in to try the extra point. And remember they started the Huskies first at 25 after a dead ball foul. But everybody was dropping so deep Cowan just ate him alive. And so did the receiver. 17 to 7. This, he's got two of them. This was a much prettier play for Anthony Allen because he did a lot of it himself. And you can see how well Cowan threw that ball. He was a little off balance, a crossing pattern. Allen senses that the goal line is there, and he drives it into the end zone. A great crossing pattern, turn upfield for the score. And the score is 17 to 7 as Cloud gathers that ominous for Washington State. A reminder that next Sunday live, the Grey Cup Championship. That is when you will find out who is going to win the Canadian Football League Professional Championship. 1 o'clock on the East Coast, 10 o'clock in the morning on the Pacific Coast. Your ticket for the 1982 Grey Cup game. And Fred White and Paul McGuire of ESPN will be there. One minute to go. Moments ago. It was 10 to 7, but one minute and 47 seconds later, it was 17 to 7. 81 yards with a first and 25 situation. Mays in the end zone will not bring it out. He will let his quarterback, Pete Casper, try to get something going. Nelson kicking with the win. But the Washington State offense, but now knows it can move the ball as it did. And the two scoring drives, as we look at the beautiful countryside around Pullman, Washington, were very, very quick drives for the touchdowns. The first one was five plays in a minute and 33 seconds. This one was eight plays in a minute and 47. So those are long drives without much time off the clock. Late Casper hands the ball to Harris, who goes straight ahead, and that is all. 55 seconds, and they will keep this clock running here in a 17 to 7 ball game. Matter of fact, the Washington Post don't want to ever get up. Let that clock run down. Well, I think that Washington State's going to let it run out also. They know that it's a difficult, difficult thing to go 80 yards against this Washington team in less than a minute. Time has been called now by the officials as Harris just now has gotten up from under that pile of Washington Huskies. On Wilson and his crew. Kittrick Taylor runs into the lineup with a play from the bench with 35 seconds to go in the first half. Don't call this ball game over. Washington State came back when down 10 to nothing. Now they're down by 10 points again with yet another half to play. And their man in motion have been confusing. Uh, no place at all for Chris, uh, James Matthews to go. Have been confusing the Washington defense. I'm sure they will make some adjustments or try to in the locker room at halftime as both teams let the clock run out. Three, two, one, the first half is over. An exciting first half. 
Washington looking for its third straight Rose Bowl in a battle with Washington State, looking for its first win over the Huskies in nine tries. It is 17 to seven at the half, Washington leads. Have to go, third quarter. Anthony Allen, two touchdowns to his credit, goes wide to the right. Scancy on the left. First down from the 21 as Scancy goes in motion. Cowan back to throw. Across the middle out of Scancy and here's a catch. They lost the football. Blood to Washington State inside the 30. Keith Millard jumps on the ball. A little under pattern again. Scancy getting in front of the linebackers as we watch Cowan dropping back. Sets up. Six step drop. Little pass over the middle. Scancy coming across is wide open on the play. Turns upfield. The linebackers close in on him. Turner making the first hit. The ball pops loose. Washington State recovers. As we told you, Keith Ballard, the man on the reception. More importantly, and I mean the inter the fumble. More importantly, the ball is inside the 28-yard line. Both Jones and Peterson go wide left. D.D. Moore comes to the right. Peterson in motion. Quick pitch back. James, big hole inside the 20 to the 15. First down. And we got a great adjustment that time by Matthews and the fine blocking. Mark Stewart came back to make the tackle at the 15 yard line. And Patrick, the guard, who made a key block, shaken up on the play, going off. But a big first down. Hittrick Taylor coming in. Jim Walden, his team 2-7-1 on the year, looking for the big upset and his first ever win over the Washington Huskies. But he's down by 10 against the fine ball club. Jones left, more right. Taylor in motion. The up man is Matthews to the foul. First down, Bristol hanging in. And once, a, once again, the movement of the man in motion is taking the two safety men out of the play, making it impossible for them to support. Just a simple handoff, beautiful blocking. Patrick making a good block up there. Matthews weaving his way through, showing great power as he drives for another first down just inside the five-yard line. First and goal to go. Peterson, Jones to the right. Peterson taking a man with him again. They pitch to that side. Matthews. It's going to be thrown for a loss back to the nine yard line by Chris O'Connor, number 30. And it'll be second down and goal to go. And that was a big defensive play by Washington. They did not fear the pass. You can see everybody coming to the outside. The contained man turned it in. Matthews tried to get outside, found that he couldn't, tried to use the stiff arm, but he's wrestled to the ground. Great defensive play by O'Connor. Second down. Taylor wide to the left. Jones outside of him. D.D. Moore to the right. Taylor in motion. Ball is to Harris. Down to about the six and third and goal. And the quick hitters inside continue to give the Washington defense some trouble. The linebackers can't quite find the ball with the reverse pivot faking by Casper. Brian Stone made the tackle. And you can see the quick pattern. Harris driving through, finding small daylight. He hit downfield. Browning slid off the block of the center. But he picked up four yards on the play, and we have a big down third and six. Washington takes out a defensive back, puts in an extra linebacker. Which is an unusual thing when you expect a pass. <laughs> third down, goal to go. Peterson in motion. As for looking, he's got time. He fires a touchdown to Peterson. to throw the ball. He could have run for the touchdown had he broken to the top of the screen. He waited as Peterson found a lot of time to curl back in the end zone, hit the open spot, and there's a happy bunch of men on the Cougar side of the field as we get ready for the extra point. John, John Kraut makes it 17-14. Big Casper could have gone to his left, as Bud said. 
but maintained his poise. Val Peterson at the end of the end zone. You can see him on the outside as he comes back across the field. Wide, wide, wide open. He went up in the air, kept his eye on the ball, cradled it in for the score. And remember, Washington must win today if it is to be assured of going to the Rose Bowl. Score 9 20 to go, third quarter. Washington 17, Washington State 14. Who would have anticipated this score midway to third quarter? Washington 17, Washington State 14. Casper has just found Peterson in the end zone for the touchdown. And this is Peterson coming across. He was downfield running the flag pattern and then broke it across the end zone. Casper was not rushed at all on the play, had time to throw the ball, hit it right on those numbers, 87 for the score. John Trout had teed the ball up on the near hash mark, will now take him to the far hash mark. And there's Brown, number four, Peoples, number 26 deep. Outstanding game, chilly afternoon, Pullman, Washington. These teams met last year for, to go to the Rose Bowl. The only one that has a chance to go is Washington this year. And to do it, all they have to do is win. But they lead by only three. Trout kicking off with the win. That is, oh, it is fumbled by Brown! On it! Well, you begin to look at your whole card, Jim. to Washington inside the five. Brown fumbled the ball. They lost their poise. The other kickoffs have been in the end zone. You can see both men there. Neither man had a chance to really look at the ball and field it. They both drive for it, and the Washington State players are there but not quite quickly enough however it's behind the five yard line first down on the four Jim Walden the coach of Washington State Cowan brings his team out of the eye formation second man through Robinson and he gets a yard and that's about all second down and a long eight yards to go as they stack him up now on a senior has won tough games these last two weeks. Pressure situations, 10-7 over UCLA, 17-13 over Arizona State. But this scoring play after the fumble by Scancy and recovery by Millard paid off with Casper torn to Peterson at 17-14. Again, nowhere to go. Chris James, driven back, led by Ben Trujillo and Pat Lynch. Third down and long. And if they don't get the first down, they've got to kick into that wind again. And Lynch did a marvelous job against Cody, the center, simply beat him. Tupawola was surprisingly strong, too, hitting the ball carrier just at the line of scrimmage. Third down and call it the long eight again. made his play of the day. The right left cornerback came up to make the play. Cupiola helped out and they're thrilled and now Partridge must kick into the wind. Last time he got a 68 yarder. Little counter action that time in the backfield designed to try to slow down the immediate quick pursuit reaction by Washington State but they recovered and prevented the runner making the first down. Partridge in the end zone. That 42 point six yard average today helped immeasurably by that 68 yarder. Partridge boots the ball shorter this time. Fair catch call. Kittrick Taylor. They have the ball. Washington State in Washington territory at the 48 yard line. The win at their backs. And to use the cliche, the momentum on their side of the line of scrimmage. 40,000 paid their way in here. 36,571 showed up. Then here at home watching on television after that 37-yard punt. Washington State is in business. And here comes Big Casper. Last time on the field, he threw the touchdown pass to Mike Peterson. In the first half, Washington State's best field position was the 38-yard line. The rest of the time it was back around the 20. They've just gotten it twice in a row inside the 50. a couple of yards down to the 46 yard line no more Ken Driscoll who has been hurt a couple of times today in on that tackle Driscoll has come off the field more than once 
but was at the bottom of that pile. He is their leading tackler. There is Tim Harris, the all-time career rushing leader for Washington State, with 2,706 yards before today's ball game began. Crystal's a real football player. Playing hurt is the test of the man's character and ability, and he's in there tough because they truly need him now. Taylor, freshman left, Moore, freshman right, Casper. Looking, running, heading to the sidelines and knocked out of bounds across the way by Tom Burnham, the inside linebacker who has come in on several passing plays. I've had a feeling that uh, Cowan could have run two or three times before. The receivers were covered. He saw that, a little bit slow taking off, but he took off quickly enough to pick up the sizable gain and leave him with third down and about two. From the 40-yard line. Well, Cadditch jumped and he said he was drawn offside. I don't think so. I think that the Cougars were in a two-point stance rather than a three-point stance. Once your hand goes down as an offensive lineman, you can't move. But if you're in a two-point stance, you can. Let's see what the officials saw. Don Wilson will say, looking back to make sure. Which way is he pointing? He's pointing at Washington State. And then one of the linemen that moved must have put his hand down in the three-point stance. Had they been in the two-point stance and moved in laterally as they did, there would not have been any procedure penalty called. And instead of third and two, it's third and seven. Here's Don Wilson. Once he turns on his microphone. Dead ball, false start, offense. Chilly but exciting afternoon, and third down seven. Peterson and Jones go wide left. D.D. Moore comes to the right. Good job of picking out the hot receiver that time when the blitz was on. State did a great job of picking it up. Horton was beat. Horton had to hold on the play. And what a beautiful job, as you said, Bud, of picking up that blitz that enabled Casper to fire the ball toward Moore. See Casper as he drops back, and here comes the blitz. But a beautiful block by Matthews, who read it. The hot receiver. Comes across the field. Horton has got to hold him. And you can see we're calling I was held. And the official said, yes, you were. 17-14 Washington. Washington State driving. Taylor in motion. Ball is kept by Casper. Six back to Harris. Harris first to the top of Tom Burnham. The 21. Tom Burnham makes the stop of Tim Harris. About a nine-yard pickup. Second down and short. Been waiting for that option from the inside fake all day long. That's the first time it's come. And Casper did a great job of holding the ball until the very last moment, which is the key to running the play well. Second and short, Washington State, 2 7 1 on the year. But when Bud and I got to Foreman, I said, hey, we can win this thing. They may not. They're not even leading now, but they're putting on quite a show. Nace is in the backfield. But that is Matthews who gets the first down. Ruben Mays replaced Tim Harris. Matthews gets the first down with Dean Browning holding on. Ball being placed down at the 18-yard line. 5.52 to go, third quarter. Harden, the coach of the year in the Pac-10 last year when he took his team to this game. Only having to win it to go to the Rose Bowl, but Washington won it. And Peterson's telling him, I can get open, coach. There's never been a receiver in the world that didn't think he could. <laughs> First down, 18-yard line. Matthews carries the ball up the middle. Nine yards to the pin. Matthews is doing a great job of reading the blocks. Defensive men are doing a good job of fighting off the blockers, but even though you beat the blocker, if the ball carrier breaks away, from the defeated man, he finds daylight. Tony Caldwell made the stop, but again, it is second down and very short yardage. Harris has come back into the ball game. Peterson in motion. Harris carries. 
gets to the first down inside the 10 down to about the seven yard line and you could just see the agony in the face of Lynn Madsen when he realized they made yet another first down defensive lineman of Washington Casper calls for quiet we're getting great line takeoff great execution of the starting count by Washington State that's the secret of making those quick openers go Brian Stone comes back into the lineup and again they will take out a defensive back Vince Newsom comes out first down goal to go Divided the safety man. He's wide open. And that for the first time puts Washington State on top. 4.43 to go in the third quarter. The fans are already in the end zone. And Harris is whooping it up. Great try. Trot on to add the extra point. point here make a four point difference rather than a three with Chuck Nelson will have a fourth quarter with the one in his back like day and night four instead of three Harris with that touchdown has gone over a hundred yards Crouch kick is perfect Washington State 21 and Washington 17 and remember, Washington's got to win to be assured of the Rose Bowl. The counter dive fake. The beautiful blocking by the line. Lynch did a marvelous job. Harris finds nothing but daylight as he goes into the end zone. And he's greeted by fans. He's greeted by teammates. And everybody gets in on it. Boy, we're ahead. And we'll recall on the last kickoff, Washington showed that their poise was up for grabs when they fumbled the ball and had to start from within their own five-yard line. And they failed James was right. He failed had another game. Failed to make that first down. Starting back inside the five-yard line, not making it. Gave great field position to Washington State. They made the seventh play, 48-yard drive in just two minutes and 40 seconds. Official bringing the ball out to John Trout. 48 yards, 240 as Bud said, with a seven-yard run by Tim Harris, who scored his third touchdown of the year. Well, a little while ago, if we had talked about the Vitalis MVP, I might have said Cowan, I might have said Anthony Allen. Now we'll reserve everything until the proper time, which is late in the ball game, and we really know who's going to win this. We've got uh, almost 20 minutes remaining, so there's a lot of action ahead. 21 to 17, Washington State. Now, a different man, Allen, has joined people's team. Dennis Brown has got back there as Trout will kick off. Looking for the senior Anthony Allen to be with people. Here is Trout. calls him away and now they bump around and finally put the knee down Allen waved away peoples and they bumped into one another but the ball comes out to the 20-yard line first and ten look like a baseball infielder trying to decide who's going to make the catch 21 17 Washington State third quarter the Washington should come behind and win this they will have been in a battle but Washington State came into this battle figuring we can do it this is a vital series here for Washington. They've got to get something going to get a little bit of momentum back on their side. Allen turns around, says something. Now gives the ball to Robinson, who gets maybe a yard, and that is all. What a play by Tupiola, who has been outstanding on defense. The weak side linebacker. Met him and upended him. The line, the linebackers, as Jim has said, as we take a look at Torrio and Tupuola, they're just not going to be blocked. The linemen aren't going to be driven back. They all close. Beautiful team defense. About a yard gain. Second down nine. Allen to the right. Kansas to the left. Cowan has all the time in the world. Fires the ball and has Allen inside the necessary yardage marker for the first down. It'll be third down and a couple of yards to go. Blocker makes the tackle of Anthony Allen, who's caught two touchdown passes today. 
Cowan continues to do an excellent job of throwing the ball. He's got great poise, delivers it at the right moment. Allen and Scanty both come left. Here comes Cowan left. Cowan's got the first down. Not by much, but he's got it. Across the 30-yard line as Carrillo and Tupiola made the stop. Cowan is hit on 10 of 13. Buzz said out what he's doing, 140 yards. Washington primarily a team that would like to run the football, but against this defense, it's going to take some passing by Cowan to put the Huskies again ahead. First down, 31-yard line. Quick pitch back to Robinson. Robinson, good block, good run. It's five yards across the 35-yard line, where he's upended by Carrillo, the linebacker, again. Don James has to be a little concerned, because if he does not win today, Arizona State can get into the Rose Bowl by beating Arizona. And if Arizona State does not and Washington does not, UCLA can get in. There's a lot of ifs, Jim. Oh. Washington loses this one. <laughs> Second down and six to go. Robinson driven back from the line of scrimmage. And Tupiola, number 54, with his arms in the air, raises him again. He is having an inspired afternoon. Washington offensive line simply is not able to get off on the ball well enough on the running plays to get much daylight for their running backs. And as Jim has said, Tupuola and Carrillo, the linebackers, are filling every crack. Third down, five to go, 2.17 to go, third quarter, Scancy right, Allen left. At the 42 and a half yard line. Tupiola makes the stop, but Allen gets the big first down. It's that same little late pattern that's been open all day. Pass situation, the linebackers drop a little bit quick and a little bit deep, and Allen simply crosses the line about three yards downfield is all, but then he falls forward and picks up enough yardage for the first down. Washington behind by four, driving to go ahead. has time, goes for Allen, and it's almost intercepted by Rod Rutherford, number 19. Rutherford made a great play. Allen dropping back, there's the fake to Robinson. He sets, throws long downfield to Allen, but both safety men are there. Almost made the interception. Had the ball been a little bit longer, it appeared that Allen maybe had them beaten by one stride. Rutherford and Hogg right with it. It is second down and ten. Cowan passing on every down now. And the ball is caught. Scanty out of bounds. First down in Washington State territory. Scanty another big catch. Scanty's fumble earlier really hurt Washington. Cowan. Drops back. Scancy is breaking to the outside. Waters has good position on him. The linebacker almost was able to knock the ball away as Blocker gets in there, too, to take him out of bounds. But it's another first down for Washington. Allen and Scancy both wide left this time. It's been primarily a passing game, but here comes Robinson. The top rusher in the Pac-10 gets inside the 45. A pickup of only a couple before Ben Carrillo up ends him. With less than a minute and a half to go, third quarter. And Robinson limping slightly. Every time he's carried the ball, he has really been hit. Second down. And let's say it is seven yards to go. Robinson's now carried the ball 26 times for 119 yards. Looking, has a man underneath again, the tight end, Roseboro, and he's close to a first down. Rutherford made the stop, but Willie Roseboro, the tight end, out of Simi Valley, California, made the stop. And we'll come back to Pullman, Washington, in a moment, 50 seconds to go, third quarter, Washington 17, Washington State 21. This buds for the Paul Newman Can-Am. Measurement for the first down. It is just about six inches shy of being a first down. But Washington 
We'll have third down and inches to go. They're inside the 40-yard line of Washington State. The ball placed down just inside the 37-yard line. Jim Walden's team holding a four-point lead with better than a quarter to go, and the Huskies under Don James are driving. Drive started at the 20-yard line. They move the ball 43 yards. Third down, short yardage. And there's Cowan for the first down. Flag goes down, and that may be a dead call foul right there. They might have gone for the ball. They might have gone for Cowan. And I believe Eric Williams was the man up top. Let's see what happened. I don't know if he was patting him or whether it was a foul. The officials are discussing it. Well, nobody's moving. Yes, now they are. They will. That's going to be a big one. Eric Williams, big number 76, and Jim Walden cannot believe it. And you can see what uh, what Walden thought uh, as we watch the quarterback sneak again. Aha! And we are very, very late. It that is was Harrington coming across, and uh, he was too fired up to stop. And should have tried to avoid being in the pile instead of on it. I apologize to Eric Williams. I saw him lift his hand up and kind of give a slap, but it was Harrington on the far side coming in. That moves the ball down to the 21-yard line, where it is a first down, 40 seconds to go in the third quarter, and the Huskies are on the move. Helped immeasurably there. Cowan is 13 of 17 for 165 yards. And is going to throw again, apparently. Throws and has a man back to Stacy Max away by Blocker. Blocker's made two outstanding plays on this drive. Blocker was beaten very badly in the first half on the first touchdown by Washington. This time he makes a remarkable recovery. Collins throwing the ball. Watch Blocker come back to bat it away. Almost made the interception. Second down, 10 from the 21 yard line. 28 seconds to go in the third quarter. Now Scancy and Allen, and aren't they great wide receivers, are both to the right. Both with remarkable speed and move. Now Scancy starts in motion. They're looking for Scancy. He was behind Blocker. Scancy's looking for a call, but did he below? He thought that Blocker had a hand on him as he went by. He had uh, both receivers saying that they were held and hit but the official said, no, none of you were. But putting those two men together, they're great receivers, as Jim has said. There were three men covering them, but two against three. One of them only has single coverage. Third down and ten. Chuck Nelson might be warming up on the sidelines. He would have to kick into a win, not strong at the moment, if they do not make the first down. Scancy wide right this time. Allen comes to the left. Third and ten. Allen. Looking. Throws out him at the seven yard line. Fourth down. Drive is stopped. Nelson coming on the field. I was expecting a blitz this time by Washington State. They did not blitz. Cowan has time, but he overthrows Allen, who is apparently in the little seam between the defenders. But it's fourth down, and Nelson is on the kick. 37 yard field goal to break the record and to pull Washington within one point. It would be his 30th consecutive field goal in the last year. Kick is up. Perfect. Nelson breaks the record. Washington scores. Washington State still leads over their opponents by the score of 21 to 20 with 15 seconds to go. And a Washington man is down on the field at the 19 yard line. The trainers are out. Taking a look down along with you, it could be Ted Brosey, 64. That's who it is, a junior out of Port Orchard. And he is hurting. A one-point ball game, 15 seconds to go, third quarter. And I tell you, the only people that I know of that expected this kind of ball game, the coaching staff and the players of Washington State. 
I believe that, and I really think, though, that Don James expected this kind of a game. He hoped it wouldn't be this way, but he was fearful that it would because all of the momentum and the freedom of action was to Washington State. Everything to win, nothing to lose. Jim Walden was telling the press, favored by only 18. He said, heck, they walloped California, which walloped us. They should be favored by a ton. And the timing of the score was helpful to Washington State. You never feel happy about being scored on, but there are 15 seconds left which requires Nelson to kick it off into the wind. We would like to say that since we are into the subject as Brosey has helped off the field, into the subject of comparative scores, Stanford annihilated Washington is only lost 43-31. Stanford at this field, Pullman, Washington, had a rally to win 31 to 26. 15 seconds to go, that's the third quarter, remember. And Nelson has just set the NCAA record of 25 consecutive field goals in a single season, 30 going back to last season, will kick off. Ad Magnuson is deep along with Ruben Mays. Now in the fourth quarter, the wind will be behind the backs of Washington into the faces of Washington State. Whoops, drops it. We'll keep it in the end zone. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. Almost a disastrous move forward there, but quickly on top of him, May says, stay right where you are. Don't come out. If he hadn't dropped it, I believe he would have tried to make the return. But it was a good decision. Pete Casper, outstanding job today for Washington State, is now on the field. The question now, can Washington State again move the ball and keep possession? Peterson comes to the right. D.J. Jones left. D.D. Moore is in, the freshman. He is also out to the right. That is good for James, I beg your pardon. And let James Matthews gets across the 25. I was watching Tim Harris did something that he'd done before. He made an adjustment, and before he got the ball and they got him, this time he made an adjustment, but nothing happened. They gave the ball to the other man, James Matthews. As a man is down, and the third quarter is over. It's a big one. Washington State 21, Washington 20. Jim Simpson, Bud Wilkinson, Pullman Washington, James Matthews, the man hurt at the end of the third quarter, but as you can see, walking off under his own power, probably still hurting a little bit. The ball is across the 25 to the 27-yard line. It'll be second down and three to go. And Jim Walden is glad to see Matthews walking off. He needs him here in the fourth quarter to maintain ball possession. 21 to 20. If Washington does not win today, it does not mean that they will not go to the Rose Bowl, but a lot of things would have to happen for them to go to the Rose Bowl. By winning it, they're in against Michigan, which lost today to Ohio State. Second down. Peterson in motion. And Harris has the ball and gets maybe a yard. It's going to be third and short. You can see Ray Cattage, number 61, getting up. He's played an outstanding game today, the senior out of Spokane. They've marked the ball just over the 28. Now, Washington State with a big play. Washington with a big play. Pick up the first down, the drive continues. Stop them, and they've got a kick into the wind. Okay. And with that in mind, Cleet Casper wants timeout. The 25-second clock had already wound down to 12 seconds. I don't think he had any chance of getting the play off, which is why he wisely called the timeout. Well, Cleet Casper goes to the sidelines. He and his coach, Jim Walden, hoping to engineer the upset. Washington has won the last eight games in a row against Washington State. But the last time a game was played here in Pullman, Washington, between these two in 1954, Washington State won it. And the whole Washington defensive team came over to the sidelines to talk to their coach, and now the whole state team goes over to the other sidelines to talk to their coach. This is a big third down play, third a little longer than a yard. I don't think I've ever seen this. There's not a soul of the Washington State team on the field at the moment except on the far sidelines where you see them. And there wasn't a soul of the Washington team on the field until just about 
15 seconds ago. They're now back on the field as the Washington State team in the huddle on the sidelines talking to their coaches about how do we make this first down. On our bowl preview show, Bud and I were talking about the games, the traditional games, how much they mean. Harvard, Yale for one, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Arizona, Arizona State. Michigan, Ohio State. Well, this is one that goes and belongs in the group. Washington and Washington State. The situation is third down. A little bit less than two yards to go. Perhaps the length of a football less than two yards to go. For Washington State. Taylor in motion. Quick pitch back to Matthews. Who's got the first down? And more to the 35. And again, that man in motion, Bud, seems to set up the big game is for Washington State. And a very good call, a very quick toss. Matthews was able to turn the corner beside the motion man. As you see, both the guard and the tackle pulling. They're able to screen off their lineman. Matthews gets a block, knocking the corner man out, turns up inside. An easy first down, but excellent blocking by the Washington State line. James Matthews within a couple of yards of a 100-yard day. First down at the 35. Peterson in motion coming this way. Casper hands and Harris gets a yard and that's all. He is buried there. Up top you can see Tony Caldwell who has an interception on the day making the stop of Tim Harris. And again, Bud, while we have a chance, please again say why the man in motion is confusing the Washington defense. Well, they don't know whether they want to cover the man in motion man for man with the corner man going all the way across with him or whether they want to have the corner man stay at home in case they run back that way and have a safety man go with him. They've been mixing it up with their coverage, but they haven't found any secret yet. Neither one has worked particularly well, and there's no support from the safeties when you have doubt in your mind. This time, no one is in motion. There's a quick throw out here to Kitchen Taylor. Taylor's across the 40-yard line. It'll be third down and five to go. Ray Horton makes the stop, along with Bill Stapleton. And so third and five at the 40-yard line. With 13 minutes and 15 seconds to go in this ball game, and Washington State leading by a single point. And no matter what happens down the line, one way or the other, if it stays within a point, you always think of Chuck Nelson, the wind at his back, and the ability in the closing moments of something, and a lot probably will happen between now and that possibility. Peterson, there they go in motion again. This time, though, Casper's going to throw. It throws. Whoops. Throw a little bit behind Tim Harris, who stopped its fourth down. Harris was well covered, though. The ball was there, and Harris had stopped it. The ball was a little bit in front of him. I think that he took a little off it. He's trying too hard to complete it. Instead of having a smooth delivery, he kind of forced the ball just a little, let it be a little bit too soft, and did not make the completion. Ray Horton goes deep, and Glenn Harper comes in to do the kicking. There's Horton, and Harper is number one. And over end, the ball will hit at about the 32-yard line. Take a bounce. And they're going to let it. It's going to do a good job for them. Not a long kick, but it's come back the other way, and no one jumped on it. And now a flag goes down upfield. Flag goes down upfield. And it may be that number 55, Tudubanu, put a block on somebody from behind, which is clipping. Let's see what happens. Don Wilson will tell us. Time is called. But there was no need for any contact at all as the ball was just bouncing around and no one was going to pick it up. I don't think it had been whistled dead at the time it happened, but we'll see what the officials say. I thought the Washington man was the Washington was walking on the back. play because he hit the Washington State man from behind as the ball was being declared dead. That's exactly what it is. It's going to go that way. So when we come back, Washington is back in a hole. They'll mark it off. 1240 to go. Washington State 21. Washington 20. Ball at the 20-yard line. First and 10. Washington State. They have not played conservatively. They need to hold on to the football. Peterson in motion. That's what's worked for them. They pitch it to that side. Matthews. Matthews turns the corner and gets about five with Horton knocking him out of bounds. Well, Michigan, bound for the Rose Bowl, lost today to Ohio State, but will still go to the Rose Bowl. Should Washington lose, they could go to the Rose Bowl, but a lot of things would have to happen. But there's still only that point difference and still four and a half minutes, and Chuck Nelson is still on the sidelines looking for yet another chance. The only thing Matthews is sorry about in the last plays, he went out of bounds. 
25 seconds more would have come off the clock had he been able to stay inbounds. Second down, five. Taylor, the man in motion this time. They give it to Matthews again. Matthews goes for the first down across the 30-yard line. They went away from the man in motion that time, and Matthews gets the first down. Newsom stopped it. The counter plays have been very effective. The third touchdown scored was on the counter play, and that was a little wider reverse motion. Clock is stopped as they move the sticks at 425. Once they get them placed again, they'll start up the clock again. 21 to 20, Washington State underdogs by nearly three touchdowns. Trying to break the eight-game winning streak of Washington and keep their winning streak against Washington here in Pullman. The last time they played it was 1954, they won. There comes Peterson this way. Ball is handed off, and that is Tim Harris going straight ahead. Not much there, but more time comes off the clock as it clicks below the four-minute mark. And it's a very quick-hitting offense with the counter plays. Everything hits so rapidly because the backs are driving straight ahead. Washington's trying to adjust the defense, moving after the signal has been called. But the Washington State offensive line has picked them up excellently well all through the game. Second down seven. State needs a first down. Washington needs to stop them. And the clock continues to roll. Less than three and a half minutes. Taylor in motion. And there goes Harris for a few yards across the 35. And that is all. And the clock continues to go. Lynn Matson made the stop. This is the counter play that has been so effective all of the time. There's the first fake. And then the handoff fake back to Harris. The pursuit from the outside was good enough to get to him and slow him down. The linebackers also did not run away. Third down, five to go. 2.45 to go. They need the first down or Washington gets it back. Peterson in motion. And there's Matthews and down he goes. It's fourth down. Down he goes, fourth down. Fred Small, an outside linebacker, made the stop. They were playing a blitz, expecting a pass, and the run came right to the blitzing men. They stop him for a four-yard loss. We have a timeout called by Washington so that we will not get any more time off the clock. Two minutes, 27 seconds remaining as the Cougars prepare to punt. Win, lose, or draw, this has been quite an afternoon of football. And again, all the Washington State team on this punt attempt with timeout go to the far side of the field to talk to the coaching staff it is 21 to 20 washington will get at least one more chance the win such as it is is at their back and they may have the best field goal kicker in collegiate football on their squad so washington can still very possibly win their way into the rose bowl in these final two minutes and 27 seconds horton is back thinking return the freshman, Glenn Harper, is back. He's not punted that well and is to punt into the wind. He's got to hit a good one to drive them back. Gets the ball away. Driving punt, hitting inside the 40, bouncing inside the 30, and out of bounds at the 28-yard line. 2.20 to go. And they are 72 yards away, field goal or touchdown, from going ahead of Washington State and going on to the Rose Bowl. From the 28-yard line, Cowan back to throw. Cowan throws on the sidelines across the way. Is Allen for yet another catch? And more importantly, a first down out across the 40. And the clock has been stopped. I thought Allen was so close to being out of bounds that he might be out of bounds. Cowan again, being very calm, and you can see Allen going to the ground, making this reception just before he's out of bounds. And the clock is dead, and now it will start again. No, the ball was out of bounds. It will not start again. 2.16 remains. The ball on the 41-yard line. Cowan, pursuit from behind, and he gets the ball away. And it is not caught because it's overthrown for Scancy. For the first time today, they had, or in recent moments, they had the blitz on 
to Fiola coming from the right side. It was a very effective play. I believe they'll do it again before they'll let them march the ball continually against them. Second down, 10. Crowd, a lot of them on their feet. That stake for Washington State, just an upset, a big upset, and the warm winner. For Washington, it is the Rose Bowl. Possibly they can still win should they lose or go to the Rose Bowl. Here comes a blitz again. This time it won't be picked up. Ball is loose belong to Washington State. The blitz works. You and save it. Down is hit from behind and Warren gets the ball. You save it till you need it, I guess, Jim. I thought they should blitz earlier. But when they came twice in a row, they got an incomplete pass and then forced the fumble. The man who came in was Keith Ballard. They picked up the blitz with Bob Ballard, and Waters got the ball. 2.05 to go. Here comes the blitz. There are eight of them coming. Cowan can't seal it from the blind side. He's hit before he has any chance to make any sort of recovery by Treese. The ball bounces loose. Washington State recovers. They've got the ball on the 28-yard line going in. Two minutes and five seconds remaining, and they are one point ahead. And let us give credit where it is due to Rob Priest, number 13, not 93, Keith Millard. The big play. And now Washington State must keep its cool for two minutes and five seconds. And Washington on a drive with Nelson on the sidelines to put him up 23-21. Possibly the blitz work. Waters recovers the fumble, and here come the Cougars. Peterson in motion to the right. Ball is handed to Matthews. Matthews gets down near the 25-yard line. As the clock goes below the two-minute mark. Now, if Washington does not win here today, it means that Arizona State, by beating Arizona next week, can go to the Rose Bowl, not the Fiesta Bowl they're scheduled to go to. If Arizona State does not win and UCLA playing at the moment we speak to now knocks off Southern California, in that case, UCLA could go. But their probability, the possibility is we've got 155 to go and it's not over yet. We'll come back. Washington State 21, Washington 20. State on the 26th. Washington took a timeout to kill the clock. They have only one more timeout remaining, which means if Washington State can make this first down, they can run out the clock. Second down, eight yards to go. Jones comes wide to the left. Flanked inside him is Taylor. Fleet Casper, the quarterback. Taylor in motion. Matthews goes down. Clock will continue to run until they call timeout. They're calling timeout right now, and that's going to be the last one with 1.48 to go. And you know, we cannot now pick the MVP. We've got some ideas that the score hangs in there to what it is now, but we can't do it because we don't know that the game has been clinched yet. And whoever is the swing man at the close of the game can make the difference. I would say, without giving anything away, it's either number nine on one side of the line of scrimmage or number 14 on the other side, and they both play quarterback. They I'm both play trying, trying to agree with you, unless Washington could make some kind of a big move down the field and get a field goal where you'd have to say Nelson, perhaps. Third down, eight to go. Just as Washington committed the turnover when the blitz worked on Cowan, so something can go awry here to give Washington a chance. And Washington, of course, Washington State could try for a field goal if they fail to pick up this first down to again give them a four point lead. We're talking about the quarterbacks bud and for Washington State Harris and Matthews have both carried 26 times Harris for 124 yards Matthews for 110. I guess the great defensive football team third down eight ball at the 26 yard line Washington State has it 21 to 20 there's the time. No more timeouts left for Washington, according to our staff. And Fleet Casper has his instructions. Casper coming this way. He's not going to throw that ball. Not now. Down he goes, shy of the first down. Knocked down by Ken Driscoll, number 40. And it's fourth down with the clock running. They'll take as much time as they can before they get this play off. I don't think Jim they're going to try for the field goal. I think they'll just simply run the ball and hope they make up the first make the first down. Letting the clock run. Well, 
I'm sitting up here. Everybody's second guessing. I'm not looking for the throw, bud, but I'm looking for a man in motion to see if it works just one more time the way it has worked so effectively for them. And I think we're going to get a timeout called now by Washington State. No, we're not. The decision has been made by Walden. Clock is running. And he's going to let now he's run gonna all call the way. Time. Then they're going to call go all the way down to 59 seconds. Now calls timeout with fourth down and about three and a half yards. Well, we have 59 seconds to go. And you will see what happens in those 59 seconds when we return to Pullman, Washington, with Washington State trying to pull the biggest upset in the Pac-10 this year. 21 to 20, they lead the Huskies. Seconds to go, Trout is going to try a 38-yard field goal, which would make a four-point difference. If he doesn't make it, Washington still has to drive in less than 59 seconds with no timeouts, but look out for the possibility of a block. Trout gets the ball up. It is good! Oh, Washington needs a touchdown to go ahead. Freshman John Trout and Jim Walden calling his players over before the kickoff. Watch Trout. Keeps his eye on the ball. Swings the foot through. He watches it and he sees it. The holder sees it. And how sweet it is. How sweet it is and what we've been talking about all week long. The traditional game. The big game. And there's nothing bigger in the Northwest than Washington and Washington State. Washington, for several weeks this year, number one of the country. Knocked off by Stanford. All to keep on and coming in here nine and one and an 18 point favorite against Washington State, which was two seven and one this year. Now with 56 seconds to go, Washington needs a touchdown to ensure itself a berth in the Rose Bowl. But even if they lose by a couple of possibilities, they might still go. But they'll have to wait another week to find out. And what you're always wondering about from a coaching standpoint here is should we kick it away and give them a chance to get a well-organized return or do we squib kick it, spin it, which makes it very difficult to time the return. The receiving team usually gets better field position, but you take off the chance of the long return. Don Trout has his instructions. Peoples and Allen are the deep men. Trout kicks it off, kicks it away, keeps it deep. Allen is going to bring it out. The 5, the 10. He's got great speed and gets out to the 25-yard line, across the 25. And with 51 seconds to go, here come the Huskies of Washington and Allen, who was out on the Stanford game with an ankle injury and has caught two touchdown passes here today, is down and it looks as though he's holding onto the ankle again. That would be a big loss if Allen... Cannot make it. Maybe he's got a cramp. Hopefully it's not a knee, bud. Good heavens. I hope not, too. He's had a marvelous day. One of the better receivers we have seen this season. Came back off the injury list to replace the injured Aaron Williams and has done an outstanding job today. His second touchdown run after the catch was just a picture play. And now the senior from Seattle is down. Nine passes, 140 yards. The two touchdowns that Washington has. Well, now do you go to a prevent defense with your Washington State, or do you con continue to put the pressure on? The pressure is what paid off for it. Does this remind you a little bit of the Sun Devil Stadium, Stanford and Arizona State? Stanford in the last minute, went ahead 47 seconds to go, went into a prevent defense, and Todd Hans brought Arizona State back and won it with just seconds to go, about four, as I recall. I would think that... Washington State will do their best to put some pressure on the offensive team, and particularly on Cowan. Don't give him time to get set to throw the ball. Cowan, last time he had the ball, Allen comes off. Fortunately, just a cramp. He should be able to get back into the game. Cowan, remember, was bothered by the blitz last time. On two successive plays, the second time, the fumble waters were covered. 51 seconds to go, 75 yards to go. They need a touchdown. They're in a formation with four quick receivers able to get downfield. Cowan dropping back, has the time, throws it, is intercepted! That's it, Washington State. Mark 
twice the outside linebacker made the interception with 47 seconds to go. And we may see the big upset. Look at Jim Walden, 2 7 and 1. What a year he thought it was going to be a great one. The folks down in the Rose Bowl must be thinking, oh my, what will happen? can't see the wide receiver starting downfield. Police comes over in front of him as the ball is thrown. It's high in the air. And Scancy is not seeing the football because it's picked off in front of him. Washington State has the ball. Washington has no timeouts. There are 47 seconds remaining. They will run out the clock. Mark Fleiss makes the interception. And when we are told, we will tell you who the most valuable player is. We have had a lot of folks who have had some big plays. But Bud and I have now made our decision. 47 seconds to go. Washington State need only fall down. Remember, Washington has no timeouts left. That is correct. They can just fall down a couple of times, and that is it. And Casper falls down. And our Vitalis player, Jim, is Cleet Casper, the senior from Issaquah, Washington, who has led them to an upset win over Washington. And I have another thought. It might be the Washington State man in motion. Oh, that <laughs> could be true. Time is called, and it is because there's a penalty, not because of anything. As we said, there's the man, Cleet Casper, the Vitalis MVP of the game. He did not alternate with Ricky Turner today. Turner did not play a down. The senior Casper, who was back up in 1978 to Jack Thompson, has come on to be the man of the hour in the upset of the year in the Pac-10. This may prevent Washington from going to the Rose Bowl. We, as we told you, combination of events, they can still go. Casper now coolly watching the clock wind down before he falls down. He's only got to fall down this time, and this ball game is over. That's all he's got to do. Ladies and gentlemen, you have seen one of the big upsets of 1982. Washington came here. They knocked Washington State out for the Rose Bowl last year and went. Now Washington State may have knocked Washington out. Five, four, three, two, one. Washington State upsets Washington 24 to 20. And an emotional, hard-fought, exciting football game. Sellout crowd, statewide television, an eight-game winning streak. Washington over Washington State broken. Don James of Washington had never, ever lost to Washington State. And he loses today. He had the personal winning record. And why don't the goalposts come down? Washington may go to the Rose Bowl, but Washington State has made it almost improbable that they do go to the Rose Bowl. And Washington State is going nowhere except back home for the holidays with that warm winter ahead. Halftime score, 17 to 7. It didn't appear that Washington was any great trouble. However, the state scored the second time they had the ball in the second half. And from then on, it was a whale of a game. Final score, Washington State 24, Washington 20. Get in Pullman, Washington, and in Byron's for some time to come tonight. An unbelievable upset, bud. Well, it looked like uh, they had made a great, great attempt to win the game, but had lost it with the score 21 to 20. And Nelson, the great field goal kicker who hadn't missed one as long as I could remember, but he missed it, and the Cougars remained ahead. And what for? Washington led 10 nothing and 17 to 7. Twice they had 10 point leads. They came in as the 18 point favorites. All they had to do was to beat a team 2-7 and 1 and go to the Rose Bowl. Jim Wallace thought he could win, and Don James knew. It was going to be a tough game. Well, the game plan that uh, Washington State had, particularly the running attack on offense, and then the excellent passing of Casper when he needed to, made the victory possible. Well, the team has gone to the Rose Bowl today. Michigan lost, and Washington may not go because they lost. Jim Simpson, Bud Wilkinson will be at the Rose Bowl, but this must be savored. Washington State upset Washington. Huh? not just promised but proved it's a legend that hasn't
changed in 132 years, cast in these rivets, pockets, and seams. Be part of the legend. Ask for Levi's red tab. The jeans are blue. The legend is red. New pan pizza at Pizza Hut. Pizza made with Get into new pan pizza at your Pizza mm. Hut restaurant with an incredibly edible crust. Ah, get it at your Pizza Hut. New pan pizza. Come and get it. Ah. Here's your ticket to ride. K-Town's Hit Express with superstar Rick Springfield. Come right. The incredible Aldo Nova. Break the sound barrier with Journey, Ben and Worth, and Tommy Tuto. White Hot Split Air. Chilliwack, the police, and super group Loverboy. Get on K-Tel's Hit Express. It's in stores now. The Future Shop has more electronic games than Wertens in the Constellation, Meldon. Wertens? Look for rental units. I have amassed 200,000 points, and I am about to consume another pinky. This new game simulates exactly the War of the Neutrons during the 29th day of in France. Must get to Gorilla and save damsel in distress. The Future Shop has brought together all the video, electronic, and home computer equipment of the known universe. The Future Shop, 943 West Broadway. BC's finest hour. <laughs>